God sent His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for the sin condemned sin in the flesh. The law couldn't take care of it. Right. But there's a man called Jesus. Yes. When He went up the hill of your God and says, Hey, I've got it all under control. All right. yes. I'm that perfect sacrifice that took the sins of humanity and they're going to nail it to the cross that you and I can have a chance to be saved. Yes. Praise God. Verse 4, that the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. I tell you today, I don't want to be carnal minded because I'm going to die. And you know what? When you die, there's a place that sooner in your life you get cut off. Uh -huh. And there's no hope for you anymore. Right. You know, if you just stay carnal, but when you come into that stage of a reprobate, you're in dangerous territory with God. Sure. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church. It doesn't matter how long you've known about church. The main thing that you get in church is stay in church. Right. That's right. the main important part today. Yeah. But sure enough, standing today and walking back and forth across the front of this congregation, there is a bride today. Uh -huh. There is a church to be read to the way. Yes. Whether you're part of it or I'm part of it, it doesn't matter to God, really. It's our choice today yeah. to get in the ship and stay in the ship today. That's right. You know, the storm is going to come and the wind is going to blow and the trial is going to come with me, Cain, but i got to stay in the ship. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it looks like I'm down for the last time. i got to lift my head and say, Jesus, I'm determined to hold out to the end. Yes. All right. I heard you had the song most out Wednesday night. That was one of my favorite songs. I am determined to hold out to the end. Yeah. Yes. Praise God. You gotta be determined to that. Right. You know, a lot of our problems today, we don't have no determination. Yeah. Then we wonder why we become carnal uh -huh. We wonder why our flesh is always battling against the spirit. Right. We gotta be determined to that. You know, that horse yesterday that won the derby, that jockey was determined. He knew when he was going to let him loose at the right time and he was determined he was going to win the race. Yes. You know what? The race for that for the Kentucky Derby is over. But you know our race is still going on today. Right. Yes. We gotta be determined to get to the end, brother. Yes. Yes. Amen. I told you I'd jump all over the place. <laughs> because the carnal mind is empty against God. When you're carnal, you are an enemy against the Lord. When you're carnal, you will do everything you can against the gospel. You will do everything you can against the bride of Christ. You see somebody trying to live for God, if you're carnal minded, you'll try to destroy them. You will try to tear them down. You will try to weaken them. You will try everything to discourage them. You know, today we need to lift each other up in prayer and supplication. Encourage one another. We all need to be encouraged. Right. The race is not over yet. Right. Well, Lord, I've been in this thing for 500 years. Pray for you. But your race is not over yet. Right. You're going by the way of the grave? Or are you going by the way of death? Or are you going by the way of the rest? Right. I hope I'm here to be in the rest. Right. You know, if God foresees that I'm here, I hope I'm in the rest. Right. And you know what? It can be just any time. This world is too wicked for this world to turn much longer. Right. Verse 10, and if Christ be in you, your body is dead because of sin. <coughs> you know, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All these have been baptized in Jesus' name when you went down in the precious name of Jesus. You became up as a new creature. Amen. You know what? When I clean the baptistry out, I didn't sit there and look and see if sister so and so or brother so and so sins is in the water. I just watched the baptistry out because it tells me when you are buried with him in baptism, all things are passed away and all things will become new. Yes, right. Amen. It doesn't mean that sister so and so or brother so and so sins was going to make any difference. We all were sinners at one time. We all were born into sin. I was born in a Christian home, a very, very uh, dedicated Christian home. But I was born into sin. Not because my father and my mother were sinners. No, because of this flesh. Yeah. It was born into sin. Right. But the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, 
shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. We got to be bubbling over with the Holy Ghost. We got to be full of the Holy Ghost. I don't want to be one of those at the sound of the trumpet of God who might like the five foolish and the five wise virgins. Be going to get some oil from the lamp and miss the rapture of the church. You know, as many today is going to miss the rapture of the church because their oil has seen that. Right. That all that they had, they had let it evaporate from their vessels. That's right. They had let it go by the wayside and it has caught them unaware. But see, the five wise virgins. They were smart. They made sure there was enough oil in their vessels. Yeah. You can take a jar of water, you can sit up in that sunshine. If you don't go back and check on it every once in a while, what happens? We're very evaporated. Right. It's the same way with us living spiritually for God. If we don't do a check in our spirit every once in a while, something's going to evaporate out. Right. We're going to find out there's a weak spot in our in our spirit we didn't know until hey, that carnal tax or that temptation came by. Right. right. Evaporate. I don't want to be one of those that sit on an apostolic pew and just evaporate away. Sure. Right. You ever seen people sit on pews and evaporate away? Yes. I've seen that. Yes. Well, I'll let everybody else do the worship. I'll let everybody else do the praying. I'll let everybody else do the fasting. I'll let everybody, all the preachers do the preaching. And I'm just going to sit here and just evaporate away. That's what happens. That's what happens. God didn't say... Just praise the Lord when you feel like it. He said, everything to have breath, praise ye the Lord. Yeah. Everything to have breath. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't worry about this or so or so or brother so so we don't have it. You know if I worried about that? You know where I'd be today? I'd probably be in a bar room someplace just drinking it up. Sure. Yelling and screaming like somebody that has lost their brains upstairs in the little pea brain. That's where I would be today. I cannot pay attention to people. If you pay attention to people, they will destroy you. Yes. They will destroy you. That's the business of the devil today, to destroy you and to weaken you. Yeah. Because he is mad at you. Whenever you do anything for God, the devil will get mad. Right. You can take that to the bank and bank it in your checking account. Anytime you do anything for God, the devil is going to get mad at you. Verse 12, Therefore, brother, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, you shall die, but if we through the Spirit be mortified the deeds of the body, you shall live. I want to live today. But I'm dare to read the focus on. In the end time, I will save hearts and minds of all kinds of people, I will sing to God with the name of the Lord, the God's Spirit, and the Lord. He just read a book of thought. He did not say that, that the saints of God will all just back way away and will not be right. That ain't what he said. They will remain filled with his spirit. Yeah. You know what? There's people in this thing that's figured it out. Hey, I'm in this for the end time. Right. I mean, I started out a long time ago. I may have been beat up. I may have been cast down. I may have been cursed at. I may have been beaten. But I'm in it for the love of all, Sister Johnson. Right. And you know what? I look up to those people today. Right. Because those people are my encouragement today. They are my pillars that I look up to. Uh -huh. I'm not looking up to those that's in today and out tomorrow. Right. I'm not looking up to those that when the first time a little storm comes around, I'm going to jump ship and go to the land. Uh -huh. But you know what? I'm in this for the love of all today. Uh, oh, yes. yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Too many people are just living by one day at a time, or if it doesn't go right today, I'm through with it. Let me tell you something. I didn't start that to just be out of the way. I started this because there's a prize to get. There's a reward for me today. There's a crown of righteousness later for me, Brother McCain. Brother McCain, there's a crown that's waiting for you. Or right. else, he didn't start this many years ago to give up. Right. right. He's fighting to the end. Right. Yes. Amen. When we allow our flesh, our flesh to resist the Holy Spirit and live according to the flesh, we become an enemy of God. God's got enough enemies. God doesn't need me to be one of his enemies that to be rich down with the mark in the market and play and pick me up and show me of the greatness. He doesn't need me to be an enemy, Brother Jesse. But he needs me to be one of those that says, it doesn't matter what happens, God. I will still be earned to the end. Uh -huh. Amen. 
The world is everything and anything that is opposed to God. Yes. Anything that comes against God is of the world. You know, so many times we try to pick and choose what's of the world and what we want to do to get so close to them. Well, you know, I just don't think a little of that would hurt or just a little taste of that would make any difference or just doing a little of that would make any difference. If it's of the world, it's sin. Right. Pretty plain and blunt. Yeah. If it pertains to the world, it's sin. Right. Brother Wallace is a pretty harsh statement. You know what? I drunk for somebody to tell me just like it is to beat around the bush and say, well, you know, you can twist it a little bit, you can turn it a little bit. What are your spirit feels? No. No. If it's sin, it's sin. Right, right, right. Just plain and blunt. And you know what? Most of us has been around long enough and read God's word long enough. We know when sin is sin. Sure. Right. We feel it. Yeah. Our Holy Ghost makes the Lord go up. And so many times we go, just like the snooze button, we're touring. Smack! And I just get five minutes of the world, and it'll be all right before that alarm goes off again. You know what? That alarm is like Brother Ronnie been preaching that guardrail. If you go past that guardrail, there's danger on the other side. And probably it's going to swallow you up and destroy you. So if you go on and cross it, you're leaving God on this side, but you're walking over into the battlefield of the devil. Right. And you know what? He's sitting there laughing the whole time. He said, they're just licking his chops. Mm -hmm. I've got it. See? i got him thinking about it. You know that's what the devil loves? He loves for you to start thinking about it. Uh -huh. right. If he just gets you just a little bit thinking about it, see? Right. Next thing you know, he has persuaded you. Right. Cross to the other side. You know, uh, it says in the Bible that the children of Israel was, was led by far by night and by day. Let me see. They've led by far by night. Help me out, somebody. By day, they've led by what? A cloud. 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 That he led them by day was just enough light yeah. to get them where he wanted them to go. See, God has provided everything. He provided the cloud by day and just showed them enough light, light to keep them in the boundaries where they wanted to go. Yeah. Where the problem came in at was when they wanted to walk outside of the boundaries. Yeah. At night, he led them by the fire by night. There was just enough fire for them to see to move around in the camp. He didn't light up the whole world. No. Just enough fire to keep them where he wanted to keep them. Uh -huh. You know what? That's the way it is today. God will give us anything that we want. But there's some guidelines that he has laid down in the word of God that he wants to keep. Right. The Bible says a straight and narrow path. Straight and narrow path. Yes. And few thereof will find. Many's going to find the wrong way. Many will find it. But the narrow path, the straight and narrow, very few will find it. Right. Oh, but Wallace, that straight and narrow path is too tough. Let me tell you something. Jesus said he would never put nothing on us that we could not bear. Right. Nothing. We 
put the sign out. Uh-huh. You know how we put the sign out? We start grumbling and griping like the Israelites did. Yeah. Wasn't enough water. Wasn't enough food. Or it wasn't the right kind of food. Wasn't this. Wasn't that. We cry and we complain. Yeah. We stick the sign out. Hey, devil. I'm not satisfied living for God because I'm not getting everything I want my way. Hey. Yeah. What? Here he comes. Aha. Uh -huh. Knocking on the door. Yeah. He comes. Gives you the visitation. Like you have invited him. In a time of Solomon to borrow. But then God had to send the angel down to the awful city to bring him out. God was going to spare it. Love's wife was so caught around. Uh -huh. It's the reason why she was back. She couldn't let go of the world. She couldn't let go of her carnality. She's had something that she had a hold of. She turned around and she looked back and it says the Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt. Right. I've been down some many, many, many roads in my life. Many roads I've went down in my life, I caused for myself. Many roads I went down in my life, I chose sure. to go down those roads. Right. I chose those roads because I wanted a touch of carnality. It wasn't Jesus that chose those routes for me. Uh -huh. It was my flesh that chose those routes. Well, you may say, well, Brother Wallace, nobody's been down the roads I've been down. I'm not saying I have. We're not going to get in a match today, says who's been down the toughest roads. But just stop for a minute and think some of the roads that you went down or pathways you went down in your life. Why did you go down those roads? Did Brother So and So or Sister So and So try to warn you? Mm -hmm. Then the Word of God tried to tell you? Then the ministry tried to preach it to us? Be aware. The devil is like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour, yes. seeking who he may kill and destroy. Yeah. It doesn't matter to him. It doesn't matter if you have a million dollar bank account to him. It doesn't matter where you live in a five hundred thousand dollar home. It doesn't matter to him what kind of automobile you drive. The only thing that matters to him, he wants you in his trophy case sure. so he can laugh and giggle and make fun of you. Right. Yeah. Do you know how many people today is in Satan's trophy case that had great potential to be great in the yes. building of the kingdom of God? Yeah. Yes. Think today just for a moment. How many people do you know that has walked away from the greatness of God. That God had called him to do great things in his kingdom. That sang today under bondage in a trophy case that belongs to the enemy. Oh, yes. Used to stand in apostolic churches right after heaven to sing for the glory of God. Used to stand behind chancels and pulpits and preach their hearts out of the oneness of God. Right. Today is standing <coughs> in a holy case matter that belongs to Satan and his devices. Yeah. I know a few myself. And you know, if it was Satan's way, I would be one of them today. Yeah. Standing in a trophy case of his. Yes. Thank God for my wife today. And she did not give up on me. She took me and she made me brother Kevin on an altar and said, God is through with him. He belongs to you. Whatever you do with this life, he's yours now. Right. I prayed, I begged, I fasted, I cried, I stayed all hours of the night on my knees and walked the board. Right. But he doesn't listen anymore. 
Jesus. Uh -huh. Heard some of them. Yes. There was sincere pastor. Yes. There was touching the throne of God. Yeah. When others were slain on their pillows, <coughs> snoring through the night, and said, hey, there's one of my children down there. There is an mercy at the door of heaven. I gotta go down and see what it's all about. Right, that's right. Come on. Mm -hmm. Daddy, hey. All these are sitting on the pew tonight. You're not here by accident. Tonight. That's right. All these are sitting here on this side tonight. You're not here by accident. Right. There was something one day in your life and got a hold of you and begin to shake you. And something began to tell you there is more than just what I'm living for. Uh -huh. Carnality. Our world is filled with carnal people today. Just to show you how carnal things are today. Sister Wallace was in Kroger's the other night. Listen to me. She got out of the car to go into the store in Kroger's. <laughs> and she made a glimpse out of her eyes. She sees something laying on her phone. A slain on the ground where she just got out of her car. She go, oh no, that's my cell phone. Some get who done picked it up. Instead of taking it to the store manager inside and saying, hey, somebody lost the phone or something. He took that phone. His driving was carnal. He had carnal thoughts in the back of his brain. She went to the customer service desk and she reported. Said, hey, my phone is missing. And she, she seen Sister Grace start and said, hey, will you watch just a minute in the bathroom? Guess what he was doing with that phone, Brother Barry? He had a little baby girl, probably about two years old. He had come to a man's restroom with him. He was going to snap pictures. Let me tell you, our world is carnal. Church, if we've ever lived for God, we better get on fire for God in the hour that we're living in. That's right. You don't know who's living next door to you. That's right. You don't know who's living the next block across from you. You don't know who's sitting on the pew next to you in some of our services. Yeah. But what? That don't happen in church. I prove you wrong. Uh -huh. Told this story before. Some of you hadn't been here when I told you this story. It's a true fact. It's a true statement. A young man comes to out of the blue to our church that we was going to. Walked in doing his little dance, playing his little hoo hoo or whatever thing it was. Every night, every service, he decided, I want to be in charge of the boys club. <laughs> Sister Wallace told me, she said, there's something I don't understand, I don't like about this guy. Right. There's something in my spirit I know is not right. He comes to our house. The boys was going to have a camp out. <coughs> Asking Sister Wallace, could he, our boys go with him to pick up all the drinks and the food? She says, absolutely not. Well, sister, is there a problem? She said, I think it'd be better that I keep my boys at the house. I am very protective of our boys, of our children, and my children. He got mad. The devil's always going to get mad, remember? Right. You know what happened during that little camp out? You know what happened, don't you? Three of those children was misused. I'm talking about sitting on an apostolic pew. You cannot tell me that the devil's not working overtime. He don't care. He will come and sit on the pew next to you. And deal with carnality. So, he left that church, went to another church, and done the same thing. <clears throat> because they look like the part doesn't mean they're the part. Sure. Let me tell you, if you got the Holy Ghost, they will speak to you. Let the Holy Ghost work. Inside of you. Uh -huh. Let the Holy Ghost be your will. You'll go 
guardrail. It's impossible to please your flesh and the spirit. That's right. Say it again. It's impossible to please the flesh and the spirit. You're going to choose one or the other. That's right. They do not mix. That's right. The Bible says you cannot mix lightness. Uh -huh. That's right. You cannot miss it, friend. You're going to choose one or the other. Right. There is no neutral side here. One or the other. Mm -hmm. I know this is hard teaching. I know this is hard teaching. But this is true teaching. Yes, it is. This is in the Word of God. I am not saying anything except I'm talking about them people that's not in the Word of God. Right. It's hard sometimes for us to realize what our flesh burns up. Yeah. We're all humans here. Sure. There's not a person in here who can st honestly stand and say they've never let their flesh burn up. Right. Yeah. We're right. humans. You know, the Holy Ghost. The story inside of us. You know the reason why it's so hard so many times for us to keep it fed and keep it on fire and keep it overflowing because of the flesh. As long as there's a flesh on fire, there's going to be temptations. There's going to be persuasions. There's going to be storms. I don't respect not one. <coughs> not one. And they've done a great job. Awesome job. Every one of y'all doing an awesome job. But don't you whatever you dare. Because if you see one of our new converts make a little mistake, beat them over the head with a hammer. Amen. Was you a convert at one time? Or did you come in the next thing you did, you went to the pulpit and started preaching? Didn't happen that way for me. Didn't happen that way for me. <coughs> Sometimes we gotta stay on the milk for a while. Uh -huh. Yes. Those little babies didn't take a ten pound steak the first day it was born and eat it up, did it? Nope. Had to start out on the milk. Yeah. Start out on the milk. And I tell you what, I'm gonna try my best and everything I do to encourage them. Sure. Yes. Encourage them. Lift oh, them yes. up. Oh yes. Tell them you're proud of them. Yeah. Yes. I tell Sister Brittany, Sister Brandy, I'm proud of you. Y'all do a great job. I even tell one of Kevin, Sister Betsy. Don't know. <laughs> People want to hear that. That's right. I tell you what, there ain't none of the rest of us sitting in here. has got that many sitting on the pew bus. That's right. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a war in my door. <laughs> it's a trophy. Come and get it anytime. <laughs> do an awesome job. I'm yeah. proud of you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Chester and Sister Jen, they went with us there yesterday, had a great time. They said they had a great time. I know they had a great time. We had a great time. Sister Marvel went with us, had a great time. You know what? That's what it's all about. Uh, yeah. We're here for each other, Brother Kevin. Right, yes. I'm here for you. Right. I'm going to try my best to help you. If you do what? You see Brother Wallace slipping. You come up and grab him by the coattails and say, hey! That's right. <laughs> That's right. We're here for each other. We need each other. Remember, Satan only needs a small window right. opportunity. Right. Small window opportunity. If you think he won't take it, well, <coughs> he's just waiting for it. Sure. You know, an insect, they're just waiting for a small time of opportunity to get into your house. If you crack that window just like that, you'll be there. Uh huh. That's what he Thought you'd get rid of it, didn't you? <laughs> Let me say.
says to all of us tonight, it takes time for God to mold you where you want you. Yes, it does. Right. right. He's molding you. There's a process. Uh -huh. He molds you. And you know what? He may have to break your mold several times before he gets you where he wants you to be. That's right. But you know what? I keep telling God, just keep breaking. Keep breaking. That's right. Take me and crumble me. Throw me down. Step on me, God. Whatever it takes, just continue to mold it. Yes. yes. And make me what you want me to be. Right. Yes. Right. If you read the Bible in Jeremiah, I think it's the 18th chapter, where the potter and the clay, there's many times he would take that clay and he probably got aggravated at Brother Barry because he couldn't mold it exactly where he wanted it. And he would probably just throw it down. Start all over again. But you know what? The process of God molding somebody is very beautiful. I love to see it when God takes somebody and begins to mold them and makes them what he wants them to be. Oh, yes. Makes them a vessel that's pure and honorable to him right. that loves him. Remember, God only allows you to just see enough to get you to the next step. God's not a God that's going to let you go out there and just take big steps and big steps and fall off the cliff. Right. He's a God that lets you see where that next step is going to lie. Where it's going to sit down at. When you pick that step up, don't be a scared. God is there all the time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And He's guiding you. And he's listening to you. You know what? A little child, it doesn't take off running the first few steps it takes. You know what? A little child, I got a little grandson, a great grandchild now, do it. He'll hold on. And he'll sit there and he'll shake. Then he'll ease out a little bit and he'll go and he'll go back. That's just the way a young child God is. Right. That's good. Yeah. That's real good. God is not expecting you just to let go and take off running. Right. But God loves it when a child of God has that verse about him. Uh -huh. And he'll let go but he'll always come back where he knows it's stable. You know the most stable the place there is for a young convert is in the house of the Lord. That's right, amen. All right. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm making any sense or not, but I feel holy ghost about oh, this. Awesome. I tell you what, you want to be fed, get to the house of the Lord. Of you want to get strong, right to the house of the Lord. Yes. You want to get strong. I tell you what, Pastor said he's going to teach about this. I'm all the does. I fell out a long time ago as a young old paper sack. I didn't understand it all. But I found out if you want to stay fired up, you get around the altar yeah. and you start praying with those around the altar. I don't care if you just have a heyday speaking in tongues. That's good. But get to the altar. Yeah. I want to be renewed every day. Sure. Right. I want to have a place with God mm -hmm. where the tears roll down my cheeks yeah. and I feel a trembling in my spirit. Oh, yeah. And I feel a voice that takes away through the winds from heaven yeah. begins to speak things into my ear and I can hear something that's encouraging me in my spirit. Yes, right. that's right. That's right. Tell you what, the Word of God is filled with passages of scriptures. If you're there, that will lift you up. Mm -hmm. If you're hurting, that will help you. If you're in grief and sorrow, they will give you the strength to jump to higher mountains. Yeah, that's right. I can tell you, look at these folks today. I'm not picking on you. Don't take it that way. I see some great singers in our choir. I can see some great Sunday school teachers sitting on those pews. You know what? I got to look beyond Sister Bethany or Sister Brittany. I got to look beyond the natural eyes of humanity. I got to look into the spirit at the realm of God. God, there's a work to be done. 
at the APC Church in Camelsburg. Oh, yes. Thank God that you're doing it now. Right. Yes. There's none of y'all going to hurt my feelings. If God would call you into the ministry, you're not going to hurt my feelings, Brother Cameron. I tell you, one more power to you. Don't say that I can't. I can't. I've never done anything. Right. Right. I don't have a college degree. I don't. I haven't went to Bible college like Brother Michael Hollywood. I'm proud of that young man. But I can tell you. God can use whatever you are offered to Him. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Walking with God, you never have to worry about walking in darkness. The enemy will tell you. Oh, there's times that he will leave you. No. Not one time, Brother Barry, has God ever left me. That's right. There's a time he should have? Yes. Yeah. I was sitting on the honky tonk bar, so drunk out of my mind, he should have just left me. Oh, but mercy and grace says no. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's it. He, one day, will be mine. One day. It might not be today. It might not be yesterday. But one day. Because somebody is pounding the throne of God for that young man. Right. Yeah. If you're here today, don't feel like that nobody cares about you. God loves every individual in this place today. Yeah. And you know what? Somebody get on their knees. Pounding heaven's, heaven's door for your soul. And you know what? God has whispered into their ears. He has an answer to them. Right. He has an answer. How would you feel today? God just took out the little book and wrote you. I can't remember how I feel, buddy. Girl walks around him off. There's not a one under the sound of my voice today has a right to write anybody off. Sure. Right. That's right. Never write off your kids. Right. Never write off your grandkids. Right. Never write off your mom and dad. Never write off your neighbor. Right. Never ever write off those that has false accused you and has become and enemy to you and it will win. That's right. Out of all. That's good. God, send your hands to you today. Yeah. You know who they are. Yeah. They belong to you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yes. <coughs> There's none of us sitting here today under the sound of my voice that deserve anything. Mm -hmm. Grace and mercy is the reason why everyone wants to say. There's not a person sitting under the sound of my voice today any better than anybody else. That's right. Do you hear me? That's right. There's not a person sitting here today you know better than the sinner that's laid in the gutter today. That's right. That's right. You call all your other ones. I don't know if it bothers you or not. It bothers me. But I see people in the same condition I used to be in. Didn't know how I got home. Just a filthy mess, but very. I remember one time I was in Germany, 1979. I turned into a pure alcoholic. It wouldn't bother me on a weekend to drink. Two or three cases of beer and a bottle of Bacardi by myself. Turned into a pure alcohol. I knew if I come through the little gate, the MPs would arrest me and take me away. And the concern that I was stationed at was surrounded by a fence and two strings of barbed wire on the top. 
talk to somebody today that's doing it. I got so pulled out of my mind one night, I knew better to go to the empty gate to try to get in. There was always a hole in the fence. For some reason, that fence had been mended. And I couldn't find the way in to the concern. So I began to climb the fence to try to get over. I got to the top, I got tangled in the bar bar that was on top. The next morning when I woke up, I was a bloody mess. Amen. Let me tell you something, friend. I don't care what you're going through, what disease you may have, or how low you may feel. There's a God that's in this place this afternoon and saying, I love you. Oh, yes. That's right. As I was laying there, Pastor, there was a voice that was going on in the back of my mind saying, why? Are you in this terrible condition? Somebody at a little old country church somewhere had been praying for me. I have too much to tell, but I can't have to turn back now. Sure. God's done too much for me to turn back now. I've tasted that every part of the world you can taste. I'm not a proud person to say that. I'm not a proud person to say that. I'll never forget in a little country church in Sanders, Kentucky. I think four or five people had night in the church. And they began to sing, you will look at cross. Oh, I got it. As the cold chills begin to run up and down my back, and the tears begin to flow from my eyes, there was a hand that was outstretched. Oh, yes. And that hand was no other than a man called Jesus. I'll never forget the time when I walked in and out at the country church. God filled me with the help of the Lord. Friend, talk about something real. You might not get a thing out of this lesson today, but I can tell you this is real. It changes lives. It makes a difference. Turn to the last page. Two basic choices today of your relationship. One is spiritual, one is common. It's your choice. It's your choice. Being lukewarm will not get you any place. Right. The Bible tells me he's good for us to be hot for cold. The only antidote today against your carnality is Jesus Christ. It's the only cure today. My desire today is to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit. If I do those things, my vessel will stay. It's all stay. Turn around and tell somebody you love and appreciate it.